All right, so uh, today we're going to be talking about how to safely and uh, download and install files from the internet. So uh, we'll be looking at how to find safe sources for things you're downloading. Uh, we don't want to download files from just anywhere. We're going to talk about things to avoid, um, how to scan for viruses, and we'll have some tips at the end and a bit of a, a video demo. So um, I'm going to turn off that notification. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Just give me a second. All right, so uh, when we're talking about downloading, um, we're talking about saving a file from the internet to your device. So this could be some sort of document, uh, maybe it's a program, right, like an app um, or program on your computer. This could be images or, or music. So all of these things is what we're talking about. We're talking about downloading files from the internet. Um, there's gonna be slightly slight differentiations in where we might be downloading these files from um, and all that. Um, but downloads can be automatic or require you to click a button. If you've ever gone to a web page and seen that a, a, a download automatically begins on your device, sometimes we don't have control over that. Uh, we can put up blocks for it, um, but it happens in a few ways. Um, common file types. Uh, so we have, when we just to kind of make clear what I'm talking about when I'm talking about different types of files. So we have documents. This includes, you know, PDFs. Um, or Word documents or Excel documents, right? Anything really in the written form uh, is what we're talking about. We're talking about documents. We might have media downloads, right? So that's audio, MP3s, maybe songs or MP4s, videos, or they can also be .movs. Uh, we also have software and apps, which is probably the most common thing you might be downloading, right? Um, usually these end with extensions like exe if you're on Windows or DMG if you're on Macs or APK if you're on Androids. Um, so these are any sort of programs you're downloading, um, different tools on your devices. And then we have zipped files. Um, and so zipped files usually end in .zip or .rar. We're talking about compressed files. Uh, usually these are larger files um, that have gone through a process called compression or zipping, uh, which makes them just a slightly smaller uh, and simplified versions of themselves for download. And then we download them and we can unzip them and release the contents of them. Uh, so these are the different types of files we may see or encounter when we're downloading things online. So we want to make sure we're finding safe sources when it comes to downloading files online. We always want to make sure that if we're going to be downloading something from a website, right, whether it's an app or some sort of resource, right? Like a PDF, right? We have PDFs on our website that you can download, um, you know, written lesson plans. Uh, wherever you're downloading stuff from, you wanna make sure that it is a trusted domain, a trusted website. So say you're downloading an app, um, you wanna make sure you're going to the official company website, right? So microsoft.com or going to the app store to download. If you're downloading an app, going to Google Play or the Apple App Store, uh, downloading through these places. These are gonna be the safest places to download. If there's any doubt in your mind when you're downloading some sort of app, um, right, from a website that you might not be on the right website, just go to the app store instead because then you are certain that that app has been scanned for viruses. You know that it's not gonna cause you any harm. Uh, however, if you are going to go to a website to download an app, uh, again, just double check that URL. Uh, you can always then Google the website, right? Uh, make sure that you have the correct one when you are downloading. Uh, you also wanna follow the rules that we kind of went over yesterday when determining that the website is secure, right? So checking the URL for that HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash, right? Um, and the lock next to the address to make sure it's safe, right? Um, so that will be up on the, the URL bar. So checking for those sorts of things when we're downloading things off the internet. Uh, you want to, when you're downloading resources, online files, avoid sites with red flags, right? So red flags might be lots of pop-ups or blinking ads or multiple download buttons, right? Um, you may not come across these um, if, you know, 
but I've seen these before. Sometimes uh, I use a website to try to pull audio off of YouTube videos to use for like certain presentations. Uh, and that is a very sketchy website I use. So I get a lot of these. It's probably a website you want to avoid, but you'll get it's any website you see where it's like a million ads, you know, you have random pop ups coming up, uh, anything flashy, or you'll see like multiple download buttons and you don't know which one's the right download button. You'll see this a lot of these websites. So anything that seems flashy, where there's a lot of you know, um, ads or, or several different buttons that say download, that's something you want to avoid. That's a red flag. Uh, you also want to be uh, careful of download pages that redirect several times. So you click download, you go somewhere else, you click download, you go somewhere else, and you never really get the download. Uh, so these sort of redirections, or if you click download, um, it prompts like a pop up or something like that. So you might see that along the way. Um, or again, domains that look off. So um, they have a weird URL or weird um, weird down file name when you're downloading stuff. Uh, and then you also want to make sure that you are just searching. I said this before. Uh, Google the site's name and reviews, or Google the site's name as is it safe, right? Uh, usually, we're not downloading anything too out of the ordinary, right? We might be downloading Microsoft Word and that's pretty easy to, to find that it's legitimate. Uh, sometimes you may have to download something that's a bit more specific. Say you have to, you know, convert some sort of file and you need this like really specific program to do it. Again, something I've had to do before. Um, but that's when you really wanna make sure you're just make, giving it a Google, click reviews, or is it safe? Uh, Reddit is a great place for this sort of thing, uh, just going through there and getting other people's opinions on it. Uh, you can also ch check websites like Trustpilot, or I said, yeah, Reddit tech forums are a fantastic place to find uh, other internet users' uh, experience with certain websites or, or downloads. But definitely making sure that you're kind of doing your due diligence. But at the end of the day, if you're lazy, you don't want to do all this, just download stuff from the App Store, uh, on your device because it sort of bypasses any risk for, for viruses on there. Um, you always wanna make sure that you use their trusted browsers, right? So using things like Chrome or Microsoft Edge or Safari, all great options. If you have some sort of out of date browser, it's not, um, it's not updated, or if you're using, you know, some random browser that lets you have access to things like dark web, you don't want to use those because those are not going to provide you with adequate protection. So make sure that you're using, you know, a known trusted browser when you're online and downloading stuff. Uh, and then antivirus tools can often block risky websites automatically. So uh, you should know. So if you get any sort of warning like this, oftentimes you can bypass it. I would just maybe not bypass it. I would just take take that warning and, and, and back away. Um, right. Sometimes they'll give you the option. They'll say, this doesn't seem safe or we weren't able to scan it for virus. So um, make sure you you check, you heed that warning. But, all right. So uh, what to avoid when it comes to it? Sort of going back over some of the stuff we've already reviewed. Um, but any sort of website that's, again, giving you pop-up download buttons, right? If it looks really flashy or aggressive, it's, if it's bright red or something, it's probably fake. Um, real down button, download buttons are usually like plain and near the file name. Uh, we'll look at some options. So here are some examples down here in the corner, right? These sort of download buttons that you'll see that have like, um, like a bubbly appearance or a bright colors. Uh, those are often those fake ones. Um, they just try to make them as obvious and appealing as possible. So you click on them. They're not going to make them understated. Um, they're going to make them big and present. Uh, or again, multiple download now links. I already mentioned this before, but if they have many download buttons, again, they might be trying to confuse you. You'll just then click on any of them or all of them, right? Try them all out. Now, so they'll do that a lot. Uh, so only click on the one that's clearly labeled and matches your file type. So usually you might see a little file name to the left of it or above it um, that you can see. And I'll show you some examples of, of ways this looks in a minute. Um, you want to make sure you don't get any files that you didn't ask for. So again, right, we know this with phishing. If you get an email um, with that you, you didn't expect and it has attachments, don't download those attachments. Avoid downloads that start automatically or without your confirmation. 
obviously this is a bit of a of of, uh, of an issue like if it starts automatically downloading you can't not download it because it's already doing it but if you see it if you notice that it's automatically downloading just make sure you go up and click that x as quickly as possible if you don't and it fully downloads go right away to your downloads folder delete it and then delete it out of your trash just get rid of it right away um a lot of the time these things won't automatically you know actually integrate themselves into your computer right away. So if you can just get rid of it quickly, that's great. Um, or any sort of pirated or free cracked software. Again, this is probably not something you're gonna be encountering, um, but these are common sources for viruses and illegal uh, and illegal to use, right? So these would be if you're trying to get some sort of uh, paid, paid sort of program uh, and you're trying to get it for free off some, you know, uh, some other site. Uh, say, you know, you wanted to download uh, Premiere editing software, uh, which is very expensive and you found a free source for it. We don't want to download that kind of thing. Um, all right. So uh, we can use virus scanners, however. So if we are, you know, going to be doing some downloading that is a bit riskier, um, it may be helpful to have some extra protection. Again, sometimes this, this you do this, like I said, I often will use websites to to like rip audio off stuff online. Uh, those websites are not always the safest websites, um, but I use them anyway because they're the only way I have to do it. Um, so if you're going to be using these things, making sure you're using proper uh, you know protections on your device. So using antivirus software. Uh, if you are on uh, a Windows computer, you have Windows Defender um, already built into your device. Uh, so it should do that work for you. And if you're on a Mac, you have X Protect, which also scans for those things uh, on your behalf. So you don't necessarily need out of protection, but you can always get extra protection uh, through third-party options like Avast, Norton, AVG, or Bitdefender. So if you want that added protection, um, you, can, you can get those ones as well. Um, and again, you want to enable real-time protection. So most antivirus software tool, antivirus tools will automatically scan for downloads. Um, so just making sure that that's, that's turned on. Um, if you can go open up the software and make sure that it's are always scanning. On Mac, you can't really change it. It just is working in the background. It's, it's hard to find. On Windows, you can open that up and make sure that all the settings are to your liking. Same with any third-party options. Uh, and you always want to keep your antivirus turned on and up to date. So if you have some sort of third party one, that means making sure that the app itself is up to date. If you're using the ones that are obviously built into your device, that just means keeping your device as a whole up to date. So keeping the, um, the sorry, I'm losing my words today, uh, the operating system up to date. So whenever you get uh, notifications, you need to update your system, do so as soon as you can. If you do need to scan a file manually, uh, so say you are on uh, your email and you know someone sent you something or you downloaded something, uh, if you have some sort of virus scanner, usually you'll be able to right click on it and scan that for viruses. Um, and it'll have your antivirus name there. Again, I don't know if this is an option on Mac computers. It may be an option on Windows computers. You'll have to check, uh, but you can right click to find the option to scan uh, for viruses. And always watch for warnings. Again, your browser is has some sort of built-in protections to it. So it'll block harmful files um, or show up some sort of pop-up that says, you know, we don't want you to go to this site. Uh, so again, always heed those warnings. Uh, and make sure that you uh, don't uh, continue against the advice of your antivirus software or your computer. <clears throat> All right, so quick tips. And again, we'll go through some demos of what some of these things look like. And there's a video, I believe. But as we said, always trick to stick to trusted sources. Use the official websites and the app stores that you have already on your devices. That's the biggest thing I can say. Always look the app store first for the program you're looking for. Sometimes they are not there. Um, sometimes you will have to download them off of the internet. Uh, for example, I don't think like a lot of Adobe programs that again I use are available on the Apple App Store. I have to go to their website to download it. So sometimes you'll come across that and you'll have to go to the company's website to download it. But for the most part, anything you need will be on your built-in app store. So that's always the first place you should look. Um, 
you want to avoid those suspicious third-party sites or links from emails. So if you're trying to download something and the name of the software you're downloading doesn't match the website URL, right? Avoid that. And again, if there's any sort of email you've received with a suspicious attachment or link, you want to avoid that as well. You always want to look before you click, right? So check for that HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash in the URL. Um, Avoid those pages that may have multiple download buttons or pop-ups or really flashy, um, you know, download buttons. Uh, scan any files you're downloading off the internet. So use the antivirus to scan files before opening. Uh, and you can also turn on that real-time protection in your security software. Um, and read before you install. Um, so don't rush through that installation window, right? When you uh, if you've seen this before, you've downloaded something, right? You click it and it starts the installation process. And there's always that window and it has a lot to say. Um, just make sure you're taking time to read that. It will tell you about what permissions the app is going to ask for, where it will be stored, what access it will have to other files and functions on your computer. So make sure you read through that, uncheck extra offers or toolbars that you didn't ask for or you don't need. Um, You'll see that again a lot. You'll open up the file and it'll take you through. Um, so again, we can maybe look at them, what that looks like as well.